We have talked about the training for physicians uh, and the current state of the profession. And before that, we have also traced the history of, of the development of the curriculum to train physicians in the United States. And we have learned so much how much preparation physicians actually have to undergo before they can be practicing professionals in this country. There are, however, other healthcare professions, and the first one that we're going to be discussing are what we call the non-physician practitioners. Uh, non-physician practitioners include uh, non-physician clinicians, otherwise known as mid-level practitioners. They are also referred to as physician extenders, although that is not a very much um, well-used term anymore because, as you could probably see, it does have some vague uh, stigma attached to it. Uh, physician extender, meaning, uh, you know, they're like almost used as a substitute, um, although that is really what was the, uh, the intent. Um, they are not involved in total care of a patient, but they collaborate closely with physicians. So what are these so-called so NPPs? So they include physician assistants, PAs, uh, nurse practitioners, also known as advanced practice uh, nurses, and certified nurse midwives. So. In the United States, um, midwives or midwifery as a profession has been subsumed by the profession of nursing. Um, in other countries, though, mostly in Europe, um, nurse midwives is an independent profession. So they do play a very important role, um, especially in areas where there are not enough physicians, such as underserved communities, rural communities, even uh, prison systems, uh, Indian Health Service, all those places that there are not enough physicians that are practicing. And non-physician practitioners are trained with technical tasks, such as um, repetitive ones that are used for screening tools for diseases. They are also uh, trained for uh, uh, non-life-threatening emergency uh, care of patients. Um, they do perform uh, you know, annual exams, physicals, drug testing, other and other routine primary care um, physician, I mean patient care services. Their salaries are almost half of what physicians make. So, in terms of business and uh, overhead costs, they are really cost effective because they pretty much are able to do a lot of the more uh, routine tasks that physicians do. So they receive less advanced training that physicians than physicians, but uh, they have more training than registered nurses, RNs and they do not engage in the entire range of primary care or deal with cases that require the uh, advanced uh, training of a physician. Now studies have shown that they are just as effective as healthcare providers and that they do provide high quality and again because of the low overhead expenses in terms of their salary provide cost-effective medical care. And because of some of the nursing backgrounds of non-physician practitioners, uh, a lot of them are nurses first before they became uh, mid-level practitioners. And because of that um, clinical expertise and because of their exposure with patients for a very long time, um, and their training and background as a nurse, uh, as a nurse before they became mid-level practitioners, um, greatly affect the way they interact with patients. There are things that need first to be resolved. Uh, there are some legal restrictions in practice. For instance, um, physician assistants. Uh, there are only forty-seven states that grant licenses to them. 
Also, the way their services are reimbursed or are paid for tend to be lower than those services given by physicians. Uh, at some point, there are also sometimes strained relationships between non-physician practitioners and physicians. Um, you know, there are physicians that say that, you know, they have trained for so long, about 11 years or even more. And then comes along this uh, non-physician practitioners that pretty much do what they can, uh, who probably just had like an extra two years of training after their bachelor's. So the first type of non-physician practitioner we're going to talk about are uh, the so-called physician assistants. They uh, originated from the military. So the first program was intended for the military. So in 1961, which was basically towards the end of the Viet, uh, no, the Korean War and towards the beginning of Vietnam War, um, there was a need for uh, medical corpsmen that could actually deal with trauma in the battlefield. So Duke University affiliated with the military and they initiated the first um, physician assistant program. Most of them concentrated in surgery, um, trauma, um, a lot of uh, uh, you know, surgical procedures. Uh, however, as the profession grew, um, it spread to primary care, surgery, uh, which how it originated. And pretty much they, they do a wide range of um, patient care. But one thing that we should remember is that they do work under the supervision of physicians. Currently in the United States, we have about 135 programs, um, 68 offer master's degrees. The baccalaureate degrees are actually going away. So a lot of them, if not all of them now, uh, receive master's degrees. So it's uh, the degree, I believe, is called Master of Physician Assistant Studies. Um, and like I said, uh, only about 47 states actually grant licenses. There's a rising demand for cost uh, for uh, physician assistants because of, you know, the efficiency that they do provide in patient care as well as, again, the lower overhead, lower overhead cost because of their lower salaries. So they do provide a wide range of um, patient care. Uh, as this slide basically shows, they, they take medical histories, uh, pretty much what physicians can do. They could also prescribe medications uh, in all but three states. And of course, those three states are the ones that do not uh, give them licenses to practice. They, however, at all times must be associated and must be supervised by a physician. Uh, the, the supervision does not have to be direct, um, you know, depending on the level of uh, training and experience of the physician assistant. A lot of them, a lot of them actually operate um, very much independently. Although on record, they are supposed to be under the supervision of a physician. Um, in many areas where there are not enough doctors, uh, PAs actually act as primary care providers. And they do collaborate with physicians by telephone, on-site visits. Um, when you see uh, this thing called Job Outlook, and um, it, it gives you a percentage, it basically says that the profession is uh, predicted to grow by 30% in the next three years. And the salary median is about 100000 98 to 100000 and roughly about you know, $50 per hour or, or a little bit less. Um, now let's talk about dentists. We will talk about the other non-physician practitioner, the nurses, the advanced nursing practice uh, professionals, when we talk about the profession of nursing. So we'll proceed to uh, uh, dentistry as a, as, as a profession. So we all know what dentists do. Uh, they diagnose and treat problems related to everything in the oral cavity. That would be the teeth, the gums, the tissues of the mouth, you know. Um, it's not just the teeth. 
all dentists need to have a license to practice in, in, in any state anyway. And in some states, uh, the requirements are a little bit more stringent and they're required to have specialty licenses. Um, dentistry has evolved historically and the public health consciousness towards dentistry started in World War II when um, the military basically realized that they don't have enough recruits that meet the minimum standards in terms of oral health and that is uh, having 12 functioning teeth. So after the war, the first public health dentistry um, school of dentistry was established in the University of Michigan. And in 1948, two years later, the National Institutes for Dental Research was established by the Public Health Service, the federal government. And also after World War II, we saw the rise of dental insurance plans. Um, there seem to be lesser graduates of dentistry since the 1980s. Uh, just like physicians, there are actually two degrees in the United States, and they are both equivalent. So you may see these letters after uh, the names of your dentists. DDS is the first one. That's Doctor of Dental Surgery. And then there's DMD, which is Doctor of Dental Medicine. Like I said, both are equivalent degrees. Um, in some states, by the way, dentists can practice right away after graduating and uh, taking their licensure exam. However, in some states, uh, like New York, before you can actually practice, you're required at least one year of residency training, just like physicians. So these are the different subspecialties of dentistry. So orthodontics, which is just teeth straightening, uh, oral and maxillofacial surgery, which basically are surgical um, procedures done uh, on the mouth and the jaws. In some, in some countries, there are uh, maxillofacial surgeons, actually is also a subspecialty, but they are physicians. Then we have pediatric dentistry for kids. Uh, the periodontists are specialists in the diseases of the gums. Uh, prosthodontics are those that are um, experts in making artificial teeth dentures. Uh, endodontics are for root canal therapy, therapy, and we also have the area of public health dentistry, which is community dental health. This is where um, dentists who practice this uh, type of um, area of dentistry serve um, medically underserved uh, communities. And of course, we have oral pathology, which uh, deals with the diseases of the mouth. The next profession we will talk about is pharmacy. So um, we always think of pharmacists as those that dispense medications, but it has now evolved and expanded um, to drug product education towards patients. And they are really experts on drugs. Um, we find them in hospitals now, um, and a lot of doctors would actually confer with them because they are experts on uh, you know, interactions between medications, medications and food and things like that. Uh, if you actually go to the pharmacy and if you want to get educated with your, with the medication that was prescribed to you, the best person to ask is your pharmacist. Uh, you know, when you go to a doctor's office, they would often write the, the prescription. They would give you a, a cursory description of the medication, what it does. But if you want a more detailed explanation and you also want to share your history um, in terms of finding out what interactions those medications might have, uh, that is probably best done with a pharmacist when you pick up your prescription. So there, there are different subspecialties in pharmacy. Uh, there's pharmacotherapists. They do specialize in uh, the intervention uh, in, uh, for diseases using drug therapy. There are also uh, the, th the pharmacists that we call uh, nutrition support pharmacists. They're the ones that are experts in um, uh, drugs that do have interaction with nutrition, nutritional therapy, it's particularly for persons with chronic diseases such as those with cancer or those that have prolonged illnesses and are actually in hospice care. 
Now, radio pharmacy or nuclear pharmacy work closely with radiologists, and these are the pharmacists that are experts on radiation um, therapy uh, that uses specific drugs uh, uh, for for treatment and even diagnosis. But a lot of them are for treatment, specifically for certain cancers. There are eighteen nine accredited schools. Um, you know, previously there were bachelor's uh, degrees, master's degrees, but pharmacy is now a doctoral level degree in the United States. Um, there are about 89 accredited schools. Um, this is a very uh, in-demand profession. As a matter of fact, we do have one of um, the best schools in the United States, if not the world, uh, right here in the city of New York, and that's at St. John's University. So St. John's University, uh, I believe, concentrate on uh, students straight up out of high school. It's a six-year program. You have a two-year preparatory uh, program, and then you continue on if you are accepted into pharmacy school. Um, there are several areas of practice in pharmacy. Uh, they, they have their own um, specialties as well, uh, like I have mentioned. Um, this is about the breakdown where you see them practicing, but like I said, they could be, you know, working in a, in a retail, um, pharmacy, they could be working in hospitals, they could even be working in clinics, um, and then, you know, in, in community health centers, uh, they could be working in schools as professors and teachers. Now, employment is growing. Like I said, this is one of the most in-demand professions because we need more PharmDs because we have more and more people basically needing medications. And that is because of the aging population as well as the development of newer medications because of the ad advancements in medical technology. Uh, pharmacists are now also uh, uh, having... Uh, uh, higher involvement in making decisions, in treating patients. Uh, it, it's not a, a very easy, uh, you know, type of coursework. It requires a lot of sciences, a lot of chemistry, uh, and all these things. But the salaries are really high, and there is a lot of demand. And uh, it, it appears that we need more than we need. We need more pharmacists than. We can produce so it will perhaps be no surprise if we also start recruiting pharmacists from foreign countries they just have to meet the certain standards on on a licensure here in the united states uh, they do get paid very well they get paid about 60 dollars per hour uh, median income as of uh, 2017 is about uh, 124,000. Uh, and this link here is actually a website. Um, if you're interested in any uh, healthcare profession, um, I'm, I'm gonna go to this website so you'll actually see what I'm talking about. So look at this. It basically tells you the median pay, right? The type of um, level of education, um, current number of jobs, uh, uh, a, a cursory or a brief explanation of what they do, where they work. Uh, this is pretty much um, uh, straightforward. So you could use this website, .bls.gov uh, slash healthcare. Uh, you could type in uh, in the search box here any type of uh, healthcare profession you want to, uh, you know, learn about. So uh, that's the end of this uh, uh, part, but after this uh, there are certain videos that I would want you to watch. That would be the videos for um, uh, physician, physician assistant.